Peace and blessings, Israel. May the most high in the name of Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shai of Nazareth, bless you all. My name's Brother Aram of the Boston Church, located in the Boston region. And Lord willing, tonight's topic, the presumptuousness of the black image of Christ. The presumptuousness of the black image of Christ. Now, I worded it that way because I want the scriptures to bring out why I'm saying that. Because the scripture's been said it. So let's head to Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, and the first verse. Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, and the first verse. And while you're getting Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, and the first verse, Lord willing, we'll do a, a quick prayer in the spirit. So, Yahweh, while Yahweh Shai, the Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, bless us as we come together through your Holy Spirit to receive thy word with wisdom, knowledge, understanding, exhortation, fear, and reverence. In Christ's name we pray and believe. Thank you, Amen. All right, Israel. So the presumptuousness of the black image of Christ. Deuteronomy 4 and 1. And we'll read from the first verse to about the third verse, Lord willing, and then we'll skip down to the middle of the chapter. So Deuteronomy 4 and 1. Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments, which I teach you. So that was the most high had Moses speaking to the children of Israel while we were still in the wilderness. So Moses taught the nation of Israel by the commandment of the Most High, the statutes and judgments. The statute meaning the many laws, the judgments mean the different penalties for breaking those same laws, right? And we was to do these laws that we may live, meaning even unto eternal life, right? And go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. So that's a commandment within itself. Okay, the Most High is telling us that we can gain life from what he already gave us, his statutes and judgments. But you, you're not gaining life by adding or diminishing from those statutes and judgments. You gain death. Let's read it again. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you. Neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. For your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor. Right? So Israel went, it tells you, for all the men that follow Baal Peor, the Lord thy God have destroyed them from among you, right? So that story is recorded in Numbers 21, right? I'm sorry, Numbers 25, right? Where Israel went to worship the sun god, meaning the devil, called Baal in the land of Peor. And the Lord jacked them up because they done added. The Lord already told them you ain't supposed to have other gods. But somewhere in their little mind, they computed that they can serve the Lord and do that. All right. So we kind of getting with, with, you know, where already the first scripture. How the Lord is against presumptuousness, right? Grand ideas, doing things differently from what's commanded you. The Most High was never with that. The Bible is not a guessing game. The Bible is not about breaking his law, but you had good intentions. You understand? The Bible is about humbling ourselves and doing what he say without adding and without diminishing art from it. So safe to say, we ain't made this law. The Most High command Israel from the beginning. He's about doing what he say. 
He's not about adding or taking away. Now let's skip down. Same chapter. Deuteronomy 4. And let's read here about the 14th verse. And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments that ye might do them in the land whither ye go over to possess it. So Moses still speaking. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves, for ye saw no man of similitude on the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb out of the midst of the fire. So that day when the Most High spake to Israel the Ten Commandments, he made sure he didn't show his similitude. Now, why did he hold back how he look? Lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image. So when people make images of the Godhead, what did the Bible just tell us? You corrupt. See, this is how you learn. You pay attention to the words. You going to corrupt yourself. That's what Moses warned him. And make you a graven image. So the Most High said to prevent Israel from corrupting themselves and do the very thing that I command them not to do, I'm going to save them from themselves. I'm not going to show how I look. So he made sure we heard his voice, but we saw no man of similitude, Israel lest we was to corrupt ourselves and make you a graven image. The similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female. So the Most High ain't given one ounce or excuse to make an image. Yeah, but he's black though. Right? We gonna get on the Catholic Church or how they done made European images. But we said we somehow find a way we, it's okay where somewhere the most high say we can make an image of him and or Christ. Now that's the key because you got people who play semantics. Oh, if you make an image of the most high, that's idolatry. But if you make an image of Christ, somehow that's not idolatry. Wait a minute. Now, see, that person done doubled down on the wickedness because now Christ, who's over the church, you saying you can make an image of the Christ. So you just demoted the Christ and removed him out of the Godhead based on the words or whim of a false teacher. Because that's who's promoting these things in Israel. Men who got no business teaching the next man because he's not even taught himself. He is unlearned. But to get the big gatherings and they use the internet and who's behind this? Satan, the devil. Because a wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land, Israel. Where the prophets prophesy falsely and the priests bear rule by their own means. And the most highest people love to have it so. And that's a lot of these backwards Israelite groups. And they teach the young brothers and the young sisters. And the young brothers and young sisters never check in the Bible if that's okay to have a false image of a black Christ. They never check. And they start repeating things that's not scriptural. When their false teachers tell them, Israel needs images so they can know the, their history. So they can know Christ was black. Wait a minute. We done crossed the line. The Most High made Israel to know his commandments. And he said, you don't add and you don't diminish from it. Now you decide to make an image of the Most High. Right? Deuteronomy 4 and 16. Lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image. The similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female. The likeness of any beast that is on the earth, the likeness of any winged fowl that flieth in the air, the likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth, right? So how many times it said likeness, right? One, two, three, four, five, <laughs> at least five times. Now I'm saying that for a reason because I done ran into a brother 
who claim he follows Nathaniel and that the, the that so-called group he got. And he didn't know that he ran into someone that's about scripture, not script. So he said, well, what's the problem with this image? It's just a likeness, brother. Right? So that's what they're teaching him out of that group. Just You could commit idolatry as long as you say it's just a likeness. Well, that ain't what the Bible say. So then for the rest of the conversation, after I pulled this scripture, he stopped saying the word likeness. Why? Because he's about semantics. So then it's, it's just a picture, brother. I said, oh, you didn't strike out again. So the most high covering any figure, any likeness, any gender, male or female, any type of animal, anything. 19 verse. And lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the hosts of heaven, shouldest be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. So the sun, moon, stars, was allotted to mankind for the service of man, not for man to serve these things, but the reverse for the service of man, the sun, moon, the stars, the hosts of heaven, to give light upon earth and so on, to divide the day between the night, to bring in seasons and feasts. They all got different roles to play, to benefit man, not to make idols out of them. So in these verses in Deuteronomy, the presumptuous in Israel, they play semantics, right? Play semantics. So let's head to Numbers 33. Numbers, let's back it up a little bit. Numbers is right before Deuteronomy. The 33rd chapter. And about the 51st verse. Numbers 33. Right? Numbers 33. 50. Well, we can read from 50. So we know who, who, who we, who, what's the uh, scenario here. Excuse me. So Numbers 33 verse 50. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye are passed over Jordan into the land of Canaan, then, shall, then ye shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you. Right? Because the Most High already told Abraham that this would happen. And when the iniquity, the iniquity, Right? I'm quoting Genesis uh, 15. When the iniquity of the Amorites are come to the full, then the children of Israel would end up in the land of Canaan. Right? But they'd have to be driven out and, and through war. The Most High would have Joshua and the armies of Israel. Moses started the campaign, but Joshua continued it. And they would destroy the inhabitants of the land and do what? Destroy what? Then ye shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you and destroy all their pictures. Why? Because in Genesis 15, the iniquity of the Amorites was coming to the full. So having pictures of false gods is part of the corruption, is part of the iniquity, is part of the abomination. So when you get brothers and sisters who don't know any better and they just following man, brother, it's just a picture. I don't understand the problem. I'm not bowing to it. It's just a picture, brother. It shows us the color of Christ. So wait a second. Christ, who was in him no sin, is going to tell you to sin. You see how it don't add up? He going to tell you it's okay to have pictures of idols. Do that add up? That sounds more like adding to the word, don't it? So they don't struck out. First they said, oh, it's just a likeness, brother. Right? Right? People who talk like this because there's a lot of different groups. 
Okay, we only named some of the group, but there's a lot of them. Right? And we had to repent of this because we learned this having a black image of the so called Christ it, way back in 1990. And we had to repent of that because that's adding to the word Israel. So it says, then ye shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you and destroy all their pictures and destroy all their molten images and quite pluck down all their high places. You see that? And ye shall dispossess the inhabitants of the land and dwell therein for I've given you the land to possess it. So that's crystal clear. Okay. Israel could have pictures, but what pictures were supposed to be destroyed? Pictures of idols. That's the difference. You understand? Pictures of idols. So when the Lord told Abraham, I'm going to move them Canaanites out the land for the most odious works of witchcraft and uh, having feasts of blood and merciless murders of children and idolaters and all that, the Lord showed Abraham a vision of that. So how are we as Abraham children, we're going to have pictures where we put our hand to some sort of deity, right? That don't make no sense. So, right. So I just wanted to get that scripture so you could have it in your repertoire. Genesis 15. And he goes through that vision that he shows Abraham of how his children are going to be in Egypt for 400 years and be in captivity. But in that 16th verse, Genesis 15, 16, you could write it down. He said, but in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. So I'm not going to bring them out of Egypt directly to the land of Canaan because I'm giving a, a space of repentance to the Amorites. Right. And they sin is not fully played out. And, it, and the, the way I'm saying that is because there's, there's a scripture in Wisdom of Solomon 12 from the first verse to about the 10th verse says the same thing, right? And so the Amorites kept on kept keeping on with images of so-called God. And when the Lord had enough, then he sent the Israelites to remove them out the land because of what? The iniquity. So it's just a picture. That ain't what the Lord told Abraham. Pictures of the Godhead is iniquity. All right, let's head to Acts 17. He's supposed to say, well, why do you keep saying the Godhead? Because the Apostle Paul, a brother that was zealous of the law, a brother that was a full believer in the Christ, a brother taught by Christ. I don't know about these other brothers, but at least we can substantiate Paul was taught by Christ. At the, he learned the truth at the revelation of Christ. It tell you that in the book of Acts. He learned the Christ. So when you read in uh, Acts 17, it says, Paul was in Athens, right? He ends up in Athens, Acts 17. And about the 16th verse, it says, Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him, when he saw the city wholly given to what now? Idolatry. Right? So while Israel's caught in that presumptuousness, they refuse to call it idolatry. No, semantics time. It's a likeness, brother. It's just a picture. But look, a man of God was stirred. His spirit was stirred when he seen Athens being the hub of the Greco-Roman society when it came to idolatry, right? And he encounters different Israelite brothers and sisters caught up following the Greco-Roman ways. So by the time we skip down for time's sake, we get to about the 29th verse, Acts 17. 29. He says, For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead, so when I'm saying Godhead, I ain't made that up. 
That's a real thing in the Bible. That's the Most High and his Christ, his Messiah, the administration. Christ said, I and my Father am one, meaning they two entities working together, one accord. That's the Godhead. The Most High speak it, Christ carried it out. When the Most High said, let there be light, Christ carried it out. And the light was, uh, when he was done with the light, in the beginning, he said, he's the Most High or the powers, right? That plural term in Genesis 1, that's the Godhead. Now, some of them lying brothers know that to be true. They know what the Godhead is. And they know that Genesis 1 is talking about Allah Hayyam, the, the Godhead, the Most High and Christ. That's why it said, let us make man in our image. Us and our is plural terms. So a lot of these lying brothers that pushing the black image of the Christ but on, but on the side of their neck, oh, uh, Deuteronomy 4 is only talking about God. You can still make an image of Christ, though. How on one breath you know Genesis 1, the us and the our, is the Godhead, the Most High in Christ. But on the other hand, to push your false image, all of a sudden Christ ain't the Godhead. He ain't part of the Godhead. Like as if we waiting for you to explain it to us. The Bible been told us. So Paul telling us, for as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead, the Most High and Christ, the administration, is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. You see that, Israel? We're not to think that. We're supposed to have the same thing like Paul. We stirred at the idolatry. We're not influenced by it, enamored by it tricked by it, trying to find scriptures to justify it. What scriptures are these? And so it said in Acts 17 and 30, and the times of this, what? Ignorance, God winked at. So when Israel is going after graven images, when they got leaders telling them Israel needs images, the Bible called it ignorance. You're in your ignorance when you think you can put your hand to draw an image of the Most High. Any likeness, any picture, whether male or female, whether any type of nationality, where somehow when the Europeans draw their hand of the so-called Christ, that's great wickedness. But now you draw an image of a black Christ. Oh, that's uh, Israel needs images. Where in the law, so that we done added to the law. But we find in scripture that speak directly, not abstract, but directly against idols and making images. So if we the offspring of God, we alive, breathing, talking, walking. How you got a picture that don't breathe, don't talk, don't walk, and that's supposed to be Christ? You reduced him to a picture? Now, if that's not some great worldliness, what is it? The heathen do things like that. So it says, in the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to what? Repent. That's what I said earlier. We had to repent. We got to repent as a people from the graven images, man. The Lord ain't had, said nothing in here about what well, we had good intentions. It was just a picture. Because he have appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man, meaning the Christ, whom he hath ordained. So the Most High speak the judgment, Christ carry it out. As we talk about the Godhead, they work together. Whereof he have given assurance unto all men and that he have raised him from the dead. So the guarantee or assurance that judgment day is coming, Christ is risen. He's alive at the right hand of the throne of God waiting to carry out the mission. You see. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead. Some. Right. When they heard of the resurrection of the dead. Some. Mocked. Others said we will hear thee again of this matter. Right. So you're going to have that dynamic in Israel. You're going to have. People who make mockery at the word of God. Even like these scriptures coming out now, 
<laughs> what this brother talking about? Nathaniel's God. Tahar is God. Bishop, right? That's how they see it. Because they under what we call, or what the Bible call, seduction, right? They say in the latter times, men shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, right? So, let's read on. Hold on, let me... Um, deal with something real quick. Bear with me. All right. So it says here, I'll read it again. Acts 17. And when the, and we at the 32nd verse, and when they heard the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, right? You got people going to make mockery at the words of life, the, wor the very words that can save them if they took heed. Others said, we will hear thee again of this matter. So they weren't sure. They were double-minded, which means they were still under influence. When you hesitating like that, that means you're still under the influence. So Paul departed from among them. Albeit certain men clave unto him and believe. So these are the ones that repented. And that's that other dynamic, the believers. Among the which was Dionysius, the aerial Pagite, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. So what did they do? They repented of the ignorance. They repented of the idolatry. I'm using all the wording of the scriptures. They repented. So now moving on forward in their life, they're going to have a similar spirit like Paul. The minute they see the idolatry, their spirit going to be stirred within them. Not in agreement, not semantics or excuses, not talking non-scripture like that's supposed to. Uh, non-scripture only works on the non-scriptural. Israel needs images. What scripture is that? It only works on the non-scriptural. That's the problem. So, Colossians, the first chapter. Colossians, the first chapter. Where it's going to spell out the Godhead. All praises. Uh, actually, the first chapter is good. Second chapter is good. Third chapter is good. Let's just go to the second chapter. For time's sake. So let's head to Colossians 2 and 8. Colossians 2 and 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of what? Men, not God. After the rudiments of the world, meaning worldliness, being a heathen. And not after Christ. So notice it said who? Christ, right? Yahweh Shai, the Savior. For in him, now who's the him? Christ dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So is Christ part of Godhead? <laughs> you see what we're talking about? In Christ dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He's part of that administration. He represents the Most High when he came in the flesh. So how dare a brother talking about Christ is not part of the Godhead, so you, therefore you can still make an image of him. Is that some presumptuousness or not? Okay, so for Israel, to even though these scriptures is in here, and they still presume to follow behind a brother? What did Paul say? The Lord winking at it, but if it remains unrepentant, he's sending Christ and he's going to judge the world. And one of the things is being judged for that corruption. Like it's saying in Deuteronomy 4, 
lest ye corrupt yourselves. So let's head to Isaiah 42. Isaiah 42. And let's get about the A verse. All praises. Isaiah 42. And let's read about the eighth verse. Hold on. So he said, I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory will I not give to another. Neither my praise to graven images. So he telling us in so many ways, he was never down with pictures, paintings, likeness representations, cut to the chase, idols. So if we down with the Lord and we down with his doctrine, as we know Paul was, who's closer to this verse, Paul or a lot of these false Israelite groups? Who understand this verse, Paul or a lot of these false Israelite groups. You, you understand where this is going? So if you got eyes to see and ears to hear, Lord willing, you see Paul was in the right doctrine. Paul knew them, the law and prophets. He knew the most high ain't no way. He telling Israel, Israel needs images. That can't be coming from the most high. Because Isaiah 42 and 8, I didn't read that before. So ain't no man going to trick me and tell me he's a bishop and then I need to have images. Ain't no sister going to trick me and tell me the Lord is with some brother and I need to have graven images. So Paul knew better. Peter knew better. The church that was with the Christ, they knew better. <laughs> so what about us, Israel? Do we know better? All right, so let's head from there. Let's head to 1 John, the third chapter. That's towards the back. 1 John, the third chapter. I have made the statement, but I'm going to say it again. If Christ is without sin, how is he going to promote likenesses of the Godhead? Well, how would that even happen once? <laughs> right? Think about it. That means Christ is a promoter of sin. That's what you're saying. When you when people say Israel needs images, and then it's funny, the likenesses of these images look more like the brother than they look like Christ. It's the funniest thing. <laughs> the likeness of the image is the, 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 the fathoms and the infatuations of a brother or a group of brothers. And whatever they're about, that's what the image is going to be about. If they're about being a thug and rough with their people, then you're going to have a thug type image with a scar across his eye and, and, and he got thorns on his head. Right? He's a thug. If the brother's about modeling and, and, and marring his beard, then you're going to see a, 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 a effeminate looking uh, Christ looking all marred up and like he just got out the barbershop. Right? So, I've seen a lot of this in Israel. And what I find in common, it's going to model, it's going to pattern after the brother that's pushing the idols. You see? You got brothers with some dreadlock Jesus because they into that foolishness. So it's going to model. And so what did the Lord tell us? Lest ye corrupt yourselves. That's why he chose not to show himself to us. Right? Now, when Christ came in the God, in bodily form, he was still the fullness of the Godhead. You ain't supposed to draw an image of him bodily. He the Godhead. <laughs> Christ ain't the Godhead and forgot that scripture was in there. Unbelievable. But these people are bishops and pass out tests to give other people rank. <laughs> you sure? That's what I'm saying, man. We really have to repent. We really do, Israel. All right, and so we at 1 John, I had it, the 
third chapter, the fourth and fifth verse. So it says this, excuse me. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. So that's the definition of sin. Remember Moses said he had taught Israel statutes and judgments. So when we transgress them statutes or them laws, that's considered sin. Like the law against the first commandment, thou shalt have no other gods before me. We start making pictures and likeness and, and representations and all, quote unquote. That's sin because you don't transgress the law. The most I ain't tell you to do that. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin. So when Christ came in the flesh, you really think he told any brother, hey, Israel needs images. Make sure you draw a likeness of me. What scripture is that, man? You saying Christ sinned, therefore he got on the cross with sin. Therefore our sins is not taken away. No, Peter, Paul, uh, excuse me, John saying the whole point of him being manifest in the flesh was to take away our sins. Not that you can draw him in the flesh. He was manifest in the flesh to take away our sins and in him is no sin. Why would he tell you to draw an image of him? Is that of Christ or is that of man? Okay, so we got to really, if we really in this for the most high in Christ, like we say we are, we better start paying attention. We better start paying attention how the false prophet gets down with gimmicks. And like the Bible says in Deuteronomy 13 with signs and wonders. Oh, this group doing so much. And we, we you know, we, we doing this. We got trade box. We, we got corporations going. We, we got jet planes. We got, listen closely. Where's the most high in Christ and all that? You're talking about carnal things, material things, and how'd you get those things with doctrines like this? So we got to repent, Israel, and stop falling for, like Christ say, judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. You got some, oh, I'm going to join this group because they seem to be the largest group. That ain't how you judge matters, man. <laughs> The Apocrypha, uh, it says, tell us in 2nd Ashes, the 8th chapter, the Lord have made this world for many, but the world to come for few. So it ain't going by the, the amount of numbers. <laughs> you, you, that's carnal. The Most High gathering his elect. So it's more going to die in the judgment than the ones to be saved. So <laughs> joining the largest group don't mean that's righteousness. <laughs> Remember, these carnal groups are about carnality. They're about the fluff or the foam on the top of the beer. They ain't a they, we ain't get to the nitty gritty. Do they follow the commandments or are they presumptuous? Adding and diminishing from the word. You see? So let's read on. Six verse, First John 3 and 6. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not, Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. You see that, Israel? They don't truly know the Most High or his Christ because their behavior shows it. You wondering what Christ are they following? False Christ. Men who use the name of Christ to promote themselves. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committed sin is of who? The devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. So it's telling you clear. When people's behavior showing you devilish things and you still say, no, that, that's, that's the saints. You're being deceived. You're being deceived. You want to be deceived. Okay. So now, they got a lie. Let's head to Exodus 25. Here's another excuse they try to use. Oh, the Lord made the ark. So it's okay for us to have an image of the Christ. 
Now, before I can finish that sentence, some of you already picked up on the ridiculousness of that statement. The Lord made the ark and what, brother? You had a nerve to finish that sentence? That's the same thing I said. Exodus 25. <laughs> From the first verse to about the 11th verse, then we'll skip down for time's sake. So Exodus 25, first verse to the 11th verse. So it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they bring me an offering of every man that giveth it willingly with his heart. Ye shall take my offering. And this is the offering which ye shall take of them, gold and silver and brass. Right? So now the Most High was, was setting up the groundwork for the, uh, the vessels and, and for the ark. Right? And for the... Um, like all the, the vessels in the uh, that was going to be in the tabernacle, right? So let's read, let's go to the scripture where the Lord tell them to deal with the ark and do and, and create the ark and so on. So what happened? Four verse, and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair and ram skins dyed red and badger skins and shittim wood. So the... Uh, the badgers, so that's how the translators put that out there like that. But we know they dealt with the, the, the real furs that was according to the law. So now, oil for the light, spices for anointing oil, and for sweet incense. Onyx stones and stones to be set in the what? So notice it said, did it say stone or stones plural? It says stones plural, didn't it? And it says stones after that, plural, didn't it? To be set in the ephods, plural or singular? And in the breastplates, plural or singular? So I did that for a reason. Because if you can understand what plural and singular mean, it says stones, plural, but only one ephod. Stones here, plural, only one breastplate. Because you got other groups that promote witchcraft, and be dealing with stones and all kinds of crystals and got a nerve to say, well, did not the Lord give Aaron the breastplate and the ephod? What does that got to do with you committing witchcraft? Did the Lord say make more than one ephod or more than one breastplate? No, this was the, the thing for the high priest. And there was only one high priest in Israel. So what is you doing with Magical stones <laughs> that give off vibrations and you boasting about it, talking about you're an Israelite. What group is this? So again, more presumptuousness. We taking what the Lord commanded certain men in Israel to do in obedience and we somehow slid in our slick doctrine. It said ephod singular. It said breastplate singular. It didn't say make a crystal uh, bracelet or crystal necklace and draw off the energy. Where did it say that? You see? So, oh, the most high made it. No, the most high ain't made no witchcraft for you. So, a verse, and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. So now the Lord's setting up for the sanctuary, the tabernacle, the incense, the anointing oil, the Ark of the Covenant. Now, here's the important thing. Ninth verse. According to all that I show thee, not some, all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle. See, the most high got the way, like a whole architectural way to do it. And the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. So they couldn't just do their own dimensions. Or like, for example, he told him in the uh, third verse, I want you to use gold and silver and brass. Well, I don't, I'm going to keep the gold. What if we use aluminum? Now, what would make, that would make it iniquity, wouldn't it? Because they sidestepped and didn't do what they was told. Instead of using the gold, silver, and the brass, they used aluminum. You see, that's what we talking about, the presumptuousness. Right? So the 10th verse, and they shall make an ark of shittim wood. Well, what if I want to use a pine tree, though? 
Now I sin because I didn't listen. Two cubits and half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. Yeah, but I want to do two cubits for the length, and two cubits for the breadth, and a cubit and a half plus a third for the height. What did I just do? Iniquity. Because I added, I did what I wanted to. When the Lord specifically told Moses, you, do, you make sure you do it the way the pattern I told you. What if I want to make duplicates? Huh? Just in case the heathen take our tabernacle or, or steal the ark. What, what if I want to make a duplicate tabernacle and a duplicate ark just in case? Because I got good intentions. You see how it sounds ridiculous? So how we get centuries later, somewhere in these verses, you could have an image of the Christ. Did it ever say that, Israel? No and no. <laughs> and thou shalt overlay it, meaning the ark, with pure gold. Within and without shalt thou overlay it and shall make upon it a crown of gold round about. So then he goes through the whole chapter how he wants things done. Right? And we get to the last verse of the chapter, Exodus 25 and 40. He going to say it again because he mean business. And look that thou make them, the them is all the instruments, the sanctuary, the ark of the covenant, the, the mercy seat, the, the, the everything. And look, meaning when he's keep, want, he keep reminding them, make sure now, and look that thou make them after their pattern, which was showed thee in the mount. So it was these brothers that's part of these groups, was they in the mount with, with Moses? But first, were they in the mount with the Most High? So how dare them use this scripture to make graven images? You see the folly? Okay, so now when we go to Hebrews 8, let's see if it changed in the New Testament. <laughs> I'm telling you, you can see how, like the Lord warned us in the book of Psalms, when people go to graven images, you become like the image. Deaf, dumb, and blind. The, the image neither hear, nor speak, nor see. And you become like it. Because now all these scriptures is forgotten, or people even know these scriptures was in here. Basic scripture. And people that's presumptuous just running game on Israel. Israel don't even check. They not following scripture. They following the company line, a script. Right? So that means the spirit of idolatry be in all these groups, man. Man worship and man idolatry. So Hebrews, right? We want the eighth chapter. And uh, let's read from the first verse. Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum, the conclusion. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. That's talking about the Christ, Hamashiach, meaning the Messiah, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. A minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not man. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices, wherefore it is of a necessity that this man, meaning the Christ, have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that they are priests that offer gifts according to the law. So Christ can never be a priest in the fashion of Aaron and the Levites. He greater than them. Right? who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. So Aaron and the high priest after them, they were a shadow of heavenly things. They were holding down the high priesthood to the true high priesthood showed up, which is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yahweh or Yahashua, the Savior. So he says, as Moses was admonished, meaning warned, of who? God, when he was about to make the tabernacle for see, say of he, that thou make all things according to the pattern show to thee in the mount. 
Because if you mess up the pattern, you mess up what it represents. That's why the Lord was strict on that. But presumptuous brothers have no discipline because the Bible call it the Holy Spirit of discipline. And when these men don't have the Holy Spirit, they have the spirit of error. Therefore, they have no discipline. This way it's make it up off the top of their head. That seducing spirits from the devil be in them. And it's be making up stuff. Figure you ain't going to check the scriptures. And then try to discredit the message by discrediting the messenger, slandering brothers. But you can't slander these scriptures. It's clear English. People got Bible. You'd have to get rid of all the Bibles. <laughs> you could slander brothers. But you could, you, you'd have to get rid of the Bibles. They forgot about that. So the Lord say, even when the ark and everything was created, you still couldn't do something different. So how, because the Lord had Moses make the ark, you can make graven images. It ain't never said that. Moses and the men that was with him was instructed to do every last detail. And that's it. You ain't never heard him say, don't forget, but after I show you the pattern, leave a window open for Nathaniel years later so he can do graven images. It ain't never said that or Tahar, or this other brother, Yohanna, uh, with some I-U-S-U-P-K. We got to repent, man. Now, the one who specifically said that lie, that because of the ark, you could have image of the God, was that Nathaniel group. But them other brothers who come from the same tree, that U-P-K, up in Harlem, they still carried the leaven with them. So when the UPK went to smithereens and the false leaders was all passed on while Christ died and raised and he's still alive, <laughs> who, who should we follow? The one who died and rose from the dead and to live life forevermore or men? So that UPK is gone, kaput, man. But the brothers carried the, the, the leaven like a carpetbagger and start a whole new group. They done started more than one group. Because when one group fell, they changed the name and, and they start another group for some of them. Sixth verse. But now have he obtained a more excellent ministry. That's the Christ. More excellent than Moses. By how much also, right, more excellent than Aaron, to be clear, because Aaron was the high priest. And Moses as well, because Moses was the prophet. But now have he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which, is, was, which was established upon better promises. You see? So the first covenant was a replica to bring forth or usher Israel into the new covenant, meaning the true high priest, Jesus Christ bringing true grace and atonement when he died on the cross for us. That's why you don't mess with that pattern. But you got brothers never read these scriptures and they telling Israel these little scripts, these little cliches. Israel needs images. Did not the Lord have Moses do the ark? And forgot these scriptures was in here. All right. And so when it come to knowing the color of the Christ, let's head to 2 Timothy. 316. How can one of the believers, right? Any man or woman of Israel learn about their savior, how he looked. You got to go to the scripture. That's what teaches us. Excuse me, I went to the back. All right? 2 Timothy 316. All right, so we're in 2 Timothy 3 and 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, meaning the word spirit is in the middle of that inspiration. So the spirit of the Most High is in these scriptures and is profitable for doctrine. Look, it say doctrine singular, don't it? So I'm going to bet all my money that Paul and them apostles had that one doctrine. And in that doctrine, I'm going to guess that what was said in Acts 17 is part of the doctrine. We not to have images of the Godhead, but we to repent. So the doctrine say, right? 
All scripture is the doctrine and is profitable for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So if an Israelite thought that Christ was a European, what should I be using to show him or correct him? Should I be using a picture? Should I be using idols on the walls of the medieval castles? What should I be showing a fellow Israelite brother? I should be using the, what comes from God, his scriptures. Now say something, right? Because that's what goes on with these brothers. They are hard-headed group. When I say these brothers, I mean these type, this type of brother that they enter that idolatry and the scriptures is right there in clear English. I showed this brother in the parking lot. He passing out flyers with an image of the Godhead. I said, I don't want that. Why not? I said, I don't agree with that. That's not the scriptures. Oh yeah, well where? I show him the scripture. He talking mess. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. the scriptures, but, but you, you can show him the image too, brother. Yeah, what scripture is that though? That's you saying that in the parking lot. Till the Christ come, like Acts 17 say, and we judge for iniquity or idolatry. So all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for corruption, correction, excuse me, for instruction in righteousness. So how is Israel to be instructed in righteousness? I got to go to the scripture. Hey, brother, we don't deal with images of the Godhead, black or white, Russian or Portuguese. That the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. See that? What's going to make the believer perfect? He dealing with all scripture. Not the scriptures and medieval books. The scriptures and icons from Europe. Bunch of pagans. Yeah, but they black though. Yeah, but they pagans. So for you to have a, a, a liking to that, the scriptures tell us the birds will resort to their like. If we was go back in a time machine, you would be painting yourself on them walls with crosses and every other thing and halos because that's what you like. That's paganism. How are you promoting paganism when you should be promoting the Christ? So no, Israel don't need images because Israel don't need death. And the Lord knew that. That's why he sent his son to keep you from death. But men choose it to themselves. All right, so we're coming up upon the end of the class. Let's go to the scripture where without idolatry, we can get reproved, right? Reproof. What's the color of Christ? Revelation 1 and 10. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. This is the book of Revelation, the first chapter. And it speaks about John in the ninth verse. I, John, who also am your brother, Right? He's one of the original 12 disciples, the brother John. So in the 10th verse, he says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. So the Lord's day, talking about the Sabbath day. And he hears this voice behind him saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book. Did it say draw or did it say write? Spelt two dis distinct ways, Write, start with a W. Draw, start with a D. So to a presumptuous brother, I read this to the brother. Yeah, you could draw it too, though, brother. I said, where does it say that? No, you can still draw it. So who taught this young brother that? Where it's, it's right there in clear English, but you could change scripture like it's saying Deuteronomy 4 not to do. You could draw, You can add to the word. Where does it say that? So the, the original brother that spoke to Christ at this very moment was commanded to write in a book. What was the book? The book of Revelation. What I'm going to show you, I want it recorded, and you're going to send this book unto the seven churches or synagogues, which are in Asia, right? Modern day Turkey, that area. And unto Ephesus which is in Greece, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea, right? So the seven churches in Asia, I take that back, Ephesus is in, is in that region. Um, 
But let's continue. So he never said write and draw. The only one saying you can draw is presumptuous brothers that need to repent. So as he hears this voice, he said in the 12 verse, and I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. So these big candlesticks illuminated. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. So the reason why John say one like unto the Son of Man is because he's one of the original 12 disciples. So as he turns, he sees the likeness of someone familiar. He said, that looked like the Christ. He should know he was one of the original 12 disciples. And he see him clothed with a garment, right? Let me turn the page. Clothed with a garment down to the foot and gird about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So what kind of texture hair did the Christ have? Woolly hair. Who came, and he came out of the tribe of Judah. Right? Same hair like you would call a so-called African-American, a black man. Woolly hair. As white as snow, meaning the color was, was fully, uh, fully gray. Right? Not that salt and pepper, but fully gray. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. I mean, he had a distinction, right? He had a distinction. He had a, a certain striking appearance. And his feet, now it's giving you the color of his skin, like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. So right there, that let you know, not only was he brown, but it was as if he was dark, so dark brown like he burned in a furnace. And his voice as the sound of many waters. You see that? So he spake with authority. So this description of the Christ, this is profitable for doctrine. This is how you prove to Israel the color of our Savior, the color of our Messiah. Because the, the, the Lord had John to write it down in the book. This is how you prove the color of the Christ. So where is say? You should prove it with images. Yeah, but see, Israel, that's presumptuousness. It ain't never said that. It said the opposite. It said to write it in the book. Okay. And so let's get the, uh, let's end the class. Let's head to 1 Kings 12, 28. 1 Kings 12, 28. Let's see the outcome of men in Israel who took up so-called leadership position or had some sort of authority, but they did their own thing. They were fully presumptuous. Let's see the outcome. Let's see if it bode well for men in Israel to do their own thing, to do part of what the Lord say or none of what the Lord say, and then say it's the Lord. 1 Kings 12, and let's, for time's sake, 28 verse, right? So 28 verse is talking about Jeroboam, right? When Israel split into two kingdoms, Jeroboam took the northern kingdom, while Judah remained in the south. So it said in uh, 1 Kings 12, 28, whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold. That's idolatry. When Aaron made one calf of gold, Israel got killed. This man made two. And said unto them, it is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. So you see what he did? What was the sign and wonder that the prophet, the false prophet just did? He came with seduction, see, to keep Israel from, from reporting to Jerusalem those three times in the year, like I say in Deuteronomy 16, 16, three times in the year, they were supposed to appear before the Lord at the temple. And that was dealing with the Passover, that was dealing with the Pentecost, and that was dealing with the Feast of Tabernacles. But what he did, he said, it's too far. That distance is too far. Let me let me use convenience to get you to break the law of God. And Israel fell for it. Whoop, yeah, what was we thinking? And all of a sudden, now Jerusalem seemed like a world away. 
because you're under the spell now. And he set the one calf in Bethel and the other put he in Den. And this thing became what now? A sin. For the people went to worship before the one even unto Den. And he made a house of high places. He made his own temple. See, don't go to the real temple. I'll make a temple. And made priests of the lowest of the people, which were not of the sons of Levi. So he gave our rank. Sound familiar? Made his own organization, giving out rank. <laughs> when the Lord, the one chosen Israel, who's supposed to be his priest. This guy make his own priest. And Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month on the 15th day of the month, like unto the feast that is in Judah. So instead of doing what the Lord say, which is supposed to be the seventh month, 15th day, he going to do the eighth month, 15th day. Sound familiar? The Bible say we supposed to have a new month, right? It tell you that one of the feast days, the Sabbath days, the new moon. You got a brother in Israel. He teach Israel, don't do the new moon. Do the full moon. See the same spirit? That presumptuousness? Giving out rank to people? <laughs> Making up your own holidays? Holy days? And he offered upon the altar, so did he in Bethel, sacrificing unto the calves that he had made. And he placed Bethel Excuse me, he placed in Bethel the priests of the high places which he had made. So he offered upon the altar which he had made in Bethel the 15th day of the eighth month, even in the month which he had devised of his own heart. That's presumptuousness. And ordained a feast unto the children of Israel, and he offered upon the altar with burnt incense. So this thing took off, man. That's why I say you can't go by numbers. This thing spread to the, it spread so bad that the Most High had to uh, put the northern kingdom of Israel in captivity. He had the Assyrians carry Israel away into captivity. That's what he did. And so when you read in the book of Acts, it speaks about two different brothers who did a similar thing. They had their own movement and they thought they were slick. And the most I had the Romans destroy them, man. Right? Because when a man's ways please the Lord, he make even your enemies at peace with you. But when you don't please the Lord, he stir up the enemy. Right? And the, bro and the brother Gamaliel spoke about those two different guys in the book of Acts who had their own movement. And he said, if, if a man make a movement that's not of the Lord, that's one thing. But if, if Peter and the apostles and their movement is of the Lord, we got to be careful not to mess with them. You see? And he told him, he told him, I want to say that's Acts the fourth or fifth chapter. I want to say fourth chapter, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, but fourth or fifth chapter. So that's why we keep saying when men in Israel are presumptuous, it never bodes well. What about the time when the Lord raised up Mattathias and his sons? in which they called the Maccabees, right? The leaders of the Maccabees. That was a Levite family. But then you had two other brothers that said, we're going to get a name for ourselves and get our own glory and honor. What happened? The Lord had them killed. Okay, he killed them boys because they tried to do something outside of what the Lord told, told them to do. And these are men that already had a job in Israel. But they wanted to chase that vain glory. So, all right, let's finish this. Now, let's head to 1 Kings 13. Check this out. This is a good story about uh, paying attention to details and doing what you told. No more, no less. This is a perfect story. 1 Kings 13 and 1. And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Now, this altar was not the altar in Jerusalem. Neither was Jeroboam a Levite. So he doing his own wickedness, like he a priest. And he cried against the altar. See, the man of God cried and prophesied against it in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus saith the Lord. Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, 
Josiah by name, and upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee, and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. So that actually happened years later. The Lord raised up Josiah out of Judah. And he took, he knocked all this foolishness down and burnt the stuff down, burnt the bones of them and all that, these priests. So that actually happened years later. So the man prophesied and he gave a sign of the same day saying, this is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. And it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which had cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him. And his hand, which he put forth against him, dried up. See, it shriveled up. So that he could not pull it in again to him. So they see like chicken wings. See, all shriveled up. See, the Lord. <laughs> so you see what happened? That would the scripture say, Touch not mine anointed, nor do my prophets no harm. The altar also was rent and the ashes poured out from the altar according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God and pray for me that my hand may be restored me again. And the man of God besought the Lord and the king's hand was restored him again and became as it was before. So he got a little mercy. And the king said unto the man of God, Come home with me. And refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. And the man of God said unto the king, If thou wilt give me half thine house, I will not go in with thee. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For so it was charged me by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that thou camest. So you see the instructions are pretty clear. Very explicit. You don't eat, drink, hang out, dilly dally, and you don't come the way you you don't return the way you came. You head up, you come on out of that region and get out of there fast. So he went another way and returned not by the way that he came to Bethel. So so far, so good for this brother. He obeying orders. However, what happened? Now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel, the words which he had spoken unto the king, them they told also to their father. And their father said unto them, what way went he? For his sons had seen what way the man of God went, which came from Judah. And he said unto his son, saddle me the ass. So they saddled him the ass and he rode thereon. And he went after the man of God and found him sitting under an oak and he said unto him, Art thou the man of God that camest from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said unto him, Come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with thee, and nor go in with thee. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water with thee in this place. So, so far, so good. He remembering the commandment. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, Thou shalt not, thou shalt eat no bread nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way that thou camest. He said unto him, I am a prophet. See, I'm a prophet also, as thou art. And an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee into thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. See? So what happened? He said the angel told him, right, to convince this brother. Yeah, but what did the Lord tell him? So the man lied to him. So he went back with him and did eat bread in his house and drank water. And it came to pass as they sat at the table that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah saying, Thus saith the Lord, for as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord and hast not kept the commandment which, he, which the Lord thy God commanded thee, but came his back and has eaten bread and drunk water in the place and of the which the Lord did say to thee, eat no bread and drink no water. Thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulchre of thy fathers. You ain't making it back home. So you see the man did part of what the Lord say. 
and then he knew better up until a certain part, and then he still, at some point, did something different. Now you see why the scripture says, but he that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. This will be telling you, Israel, don't follow behind wicked brothers that tell you foolishness and twist scriptures. And it came to pass after he had eaten bread and after he had drunk that he saddled for him to ask to wit for the prophet whom he had brought back. And when he was gone, a lion met him, by the way, and slew him. So did it go well? Didn't go well. That's what we try and tell you. Don't read part of the scripture and then do something else. <laughs> How, you, you're going to read part of the scripture where the Lord say he don't give his glory to graven images. Yeah, I'm agreement, brother. But Israel needs images. See, you didn't do the full commandment. Look, the Lord ain't never showed himself to be a God where he tell us to do something and then allow you to do something else. What about Saul when he did something else? He was supposed to destroy all the Amalek and their cattle, the their, their young men, their old, everything. He kept the best of the sheep for himself. He imprisoned the king. He kept some of the best men for his own use. And then told Samuel, I did keep the commandment of the Lord. So that show you that spirit of error. It has wicked people thinking that they're right. Now you see why you don't want to tempt the Lord. Because you could be doing something completely wrong and think you're right. And that's the spirit on a lot of these groups. That's what we're saying. That's why we thank the Lord that through his mercies, he show us and guide us. You see? And so the Lord bring us out of them, them doctrines from the world. And then he also bring you away from, if you end up in Israel, find out you Israel. And you in some group. And the Lord say, no, 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 I'm still not good enough. You still got a lot to learn, brother. Come on out that group. Yeah, but they're going to take away my test, my rank that I got. Hey, they ain't never had it to give it to you, let alone take it away. You better wake up. <laughs> but look, 1 Kings 13, it didn't go well for this brother. He almost made it, but he twisted a little here and a little there. Let's let a guy influence him. It cost him his life. What happened? 24 verse again. And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him. And his carcass was cast in the way and the ass stood by it. The lion also stood by the carcass. So that's strange. The lion never attacked the donkey. The lion never ate the guy up. It just went to kill him. And behold, men passed by and saw the carcass cast in the way and the lion standing by the carcass. And they came and told it to the, into the city. Excuse me. They came and told it in the city where the old prophet dwelt. And when the prophet that brought him back from the way heard thereof, he said, it is the man of God who was what? Disobedient unto the word of the Lord. Therefore, the Lord hath delivered him unto the lion which have torn him and slain him according to the word of the Lord, which he spake unto him. See that? So what if John the revelator, would the Lord say, well, I'm going to show you, you write in the book. And John say, yeah, but Israel needs images, so I'm going to draw it too. He would have been what? Disobedient. Because that ain't what the Lord commanded. That would be John adding to the word. See, that would be presumptuous. So there's a spirit of presumptuousness on them graven images, Israel. And the first one confounded by the image is the one who make the image. Because if anybody knows it's a picture or a painting, it's the one who did it. How are you going to say that's Christ and reduce them to a picture, a statue, a painting, a bumper sticker? Or put that foolishness on your profile on any computer or smart device, cell phone? You got idols in your pocket. Christ ain't in that. So we got to repent, Israel. We got to stop making excuses for men. We have to repent. You know, and the funny thing, you know, I don't know how true it is, because remember, the scripture said, but the blind lead the blind, let them alone, for both shall fall into the ditch. 
But I done heard some stories about uh, one of them groups arguing over the trademark of the picture. Right? The brothers arguing over as they had a separation. So, no, it's, it's my picture. I came up with it. That picture belonged to the group. That's part of the group. See, we in Esau's world. Right? He always talking about Edomite doctrine, but he sure stands strong for Esau's rules when it comes to his lusts. He into trademarks and, and 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 more money, more money, you know, building the brand. When you should be promoting the Christ, because this world going down, Israel. So how embarrassing is that? Where brothers is arguing over the the, the likeness of some graven image, who can, who owns the trademark or not? None of you should have the image. <laughs> When the brother Achan had the cursed thing in his house, Israel died. They couldn't feel, why are we dying? Because he had the cursed thing in his house and hid it amongst his stuff. That's in the book of Joshua. And you got brothers arguing and fighting over some legal custody thing over some graven image. I'm telling you, you couldn't write this stuff, man. You couldn't make this up. And so with that said, Israel, let's end with the prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Christ, we give thanks and praise to your holy name. Keep defeated thy servants that we never fall into the presumptuousness of idolatry, the presumptuousness of vanity, but that you preserve thy servants all the way unto everlasting life. Father, in the name of Christ, let this message go out to those that are bound and, and put into deceit. Let them let their eyes be open unto salvation according to thy mercies, that men may be saved through the power and authority of, of your Christ, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, Yahweh. Thank you, Father, in the name of Christ. Bless all the family of saints throughout the world. In Christ's name, Yahweh, we pray. Amen. All right, Israel. So go with God. Peace be unto you. Shalom.